it's a lot closer than you think. And, and that just speaks to one topic that I'm sure you've heard a million people say to you. But it, it does ring true. And even I, even I, oh my God, even I need to listen to myself. It's not about the gear. All right, guys, I am in Phoenix today for some more testing. Today's video, we are going to be testing the X100 Mark VI against this, which, which is what I'm filming on today, the Nikon ZF. Yeah, they're not exactly the same style of camera. One's a fixed lens, one's not, but they both shoot similarly. They both are street photographer's tools. And so because of that, I wanna test them to see which tool is best for street photography. Can the X100 Mark VI perform to a level to where I can just take it by itself and not bring everything else. I'll see you in the studio with the results. All right, see ya. Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. Wesley here, back again with another video. And today we're comparing the Nikon ZF with the new, brand new, hot off the press, Fujifilm X100 Mark VI. These are both retro styled cameras, one would be in a rangefinder style with the X100 Mark VI, and one being a standard viewfinder style with the Nikon ZF, which is really channeling the Z, the Nikon FM of the old days, the, the uh, 35 millimeter Nikon FM. So for today's test, I have both of these cameras set up in aperture priority, which means on the Fuji here, I'll show you, I have them both of these dials set to A. And what that allows me to do is it allows the auto ISO settings and auto shutter. And I'm just controlling the aperture with the ring here. And then I'm controlling my exposure compensation with the command dial, which is why I have it in C on the top of the camera. This allows me to control both the Nikon and the Fuji the exact same way. So these cameras are very set very similarly uh, on the, the dials themselves. Typically with the Fuji Film X100 series, I run in full manual. Let me go back, let me pick it back up and show you. Typically I set my aperture here and I use these both of these command dials, one for shutter and one for ISO. And that way I can control all three aspects of the exposure triangle with my fingertips on the go running and gunning. I find it's easier um, to do that rather than op coming, bringing the camera out of my eye, adjusting the settings manually and then bringing it back up to my eye. Or as I'm here, I can go quickly with my finger to adjust the aperture and quickly with these, my thumb and finger to adjust the shutter and the ISO. On the Nikon, I typically run an aperture priority like I had it set up today because I trust the auto ISO function of the Nikon not to overexpose. I've had some issues with the auto ISO overexposing some of my Fujifilm photos. I did find that the camera came stock from the factory with the EVF to set to auto plus one. I took that and set it to auto period, no plus one, because I don't want the brightness of the EVF to think, make me think that I'm overexposing the photo. I want it to be an accurate representation, as accurate as it can be at least. So that's how I set both of these cameras up. The Fuji film is running a 35 millimeter full, fr full frame equivalent F2.8 lens. It's a 23 F2 lens in full frame equivalent, which is what the Nikon ZF is. It is going to be a 35 millimeter F2.8. So for this test on the Nikon, I put the 28 millimeter F2.8 and I set them both to f4. Now I know on the Fuji that that's technically not f4. I just wanted to stop the lenses down just a little bit to eliminate softness or any issues with a wide open aperture. Now later in the day I did switch to wide open aperture, take a few more test shots, and I was very happy with the photos, but I wanted the test to be as accurate as possible and as similar as possible. So I had both black, black Pro Mist, one quarter, both running similar focal lengths, we were both running in similar aperture and both set, both cameras set up the same way. So I could just shoot and not worry about the camera settings while I was out there trying to fumble with two different cameras. First things first, 
I'm gonna share photos along the way. I'm gonna share video clips along the way. And we're gonna talk about categories and we're gonna score them. And this is just my own opinion. I'm, I, I did pixel peep and I will show you some photos here that I pixel peeped with. And as you can see in these two examples, the photos are very close. The 40 megapixel sensor, APS-C sensor of the Fuji and the 24 megapixel full frame sensor of the Nikon are performing very, 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 very close here. Now this isn't, this isn't in low light and I know the ZF's gonna perform better in low light. We, we all know this. But I, I see very, very, very little difference. The only difference I do see is there's a little bit of noise in the Fuji file in, in comparison to the Nikon. And that's probably due to the fact that it's APS-C sensor because there's more pixels per size of the sensor and it's a smaller sensor on top of it, which means there's less light per pixel being let in. Whereas the, Z, whereas the ZF uses a full frame, so a larger sensor with less pixel density, which means more light gathering capabilities. I, I fully believe that the ZF will perform better in low light. For this test, I was testing street photography in Phoenix. This is a street, photogra street photography centric test. And I really truly just wanted to see which camera performed or if they were both pretty close when it comes to street photography, that use case. First up, category one, sensor size and resolution. The Nikon ZF is a full frame, 25 megapixel, roughly 24.5 megapixel sensor. It is backside illuminated and, and the Fuji film X100 Mark VI borrows from the X-T5 and has a backside illuminated 40 megapixel sensor, APS-C size. So it's a 1.5 crop versus the full frame sensor. What this means is there's more pixel density in a smaller sensor. sensor. This, what this should mean that you can crop in with the APS-C sensor at 40 megapixels and still get clean images. Whereas with the 24 megapixel, you can do some cropping, but very minimally. Now it being a full frame sensor, more depth of field, more information, I feel like it's gonna be pretty pretty close, to be honest with you. I think these two cameras are gonna perform very, very, very close. And in these pictures, if you can tell me which one's which before I show you, then you're doing great. Let me explain to how I did this. I developed my own presets and I have my own preset. I developed a preset for the X100V and I used that and then I used that same preset modifying the, the profile for the X100 Mark VI. So it's the same preset, same choices. So these pictures minus their own color science should look identical. Same amount of clarity, same amount of dehazing, the same amount of everything. I want it to, to be as exact as possible. The only difference is, is I'm using the Real Ace, the new Real Ace uh, film sim for the Fuji X100 Mark VI and I'm using the flat profile for the ZF, which is really the only profile I find links to my preset. That's the only difference. Everything else is the same. So when it comes to sensor size, these, these cameras, I believe, even though the full frame sensor is definitely gonna be a bigger sensor, it's less megapixels. So I'm, I'm gonna mark that the sensors are gonna be a tie or very close to it. So let's move on to the other specs. Let's talk about them. Let's start with the Nikon ZF. So the Nikon ZF is a 25 megapixel full frame backside illuminated CMOS sensor. Its ISO range is 100 to 64,000 natively. It has sensor shift image stabilization or IBIS, a 3.2 inch fully articulating screen, a 3686K dot viewfinder. It shoots at 14 frames per second uh, continuous. It does 4K, obviously I've filmed all my videos on here, it does 4K up to 60 with a crop 4k 24 with no crop it has a built-in wireless it's 710 grams it's 144 by 103 by 49 millimeters now the x100 mark 6 or x1 x106 which which is a dumb name so i'm I hate calling it that so i'm not gonna do it um, the x100 mark 6 is a 40 megapixel aps-c backside illuminated cmos sensor its iso range is 125 to 12,800. Uh, it's a 35 millimeter f2 prime lens. It's really a 23 millimeter f2 APS-C lens. Um, 
It has a three inch tilting screen, not a flippy screen. 3.69K dot viewfinder. So pretty much the same resolution viewfinder. I just find that the viewfinder on the ZF is a little bit better. Let's just be honest. And it shoots 6K 30, which is outrageous for the camera side that small. We'll see what the 4K video looks like before we start making any 6K videos on it. It does, um, it's uh, 521 grams, 128 by 75 by 55. And as you can see in some of this slow, this B-roll that I shot, uh, the, the X100 Mark VI is puny compared to the ZF. And it's even more puny compared to the Z8. Here, I got the Z8 right here. So let's just, let me just show you. Look at this. Look at this. Look, look how tiny these, this thing is. It, it's, it's, it's amazing how, what they can put in such a small body these days. Well, oh, I just hit my mic. Well done, Fuji. Well done. Well done. So as you can see, looking at the specs here, these cameras have more in common than they don't. And for that reason, I feel like when it comes to sensor size and, and the, the pure spec sheet, these cameras line up very well, very well. They are pretty close to each other on the spec sheet. And now if I personally had to score it, I would say sensor size and spec sheet features, it's a tie. There's really no clear winner here. We really won't know until we get into the photos. Let's get on to round two, and that's design and handling. So on the spec sheet, these seem pretty similar, but how do they feel in the hands? Um, how do they feel when you use them? The ZF channels the legendary Nikon FM2, a film camera from back in the day. It has great brass mechanical dials on top, fantastic retro styling throughout the entire body. Now, that, that isn't all sunshine and rainbows. That does come with some ergonomic issues, in my opinion, and in the opinion of many, many, many other people. So for that, you're going to want to put the small red grip on there. I find that the weight of the camera being 710 grams, you start adding an S-line lens to the end of it with some heft, you're going to want that grip. It, the ergonomics just don't stack up for all day use. I've used it at a wedding, I, I know firsthand. Now. The Fujifilm X100 Mark VI, however, has very little ergonomics to it. It's a very, very little ergonomics, but what it does have is enough because it only weighs 537 grams. It's puny. So for, I can pick it up, so I'm filming with the ZF, so I can't do that. So for this lens, this camera, I don't really need a lot to hold it. This isn't, this isn't heavy. You know, I don't need, I just need enough to put my hand here and it has a small lip in the back. The, the, the ZF could have done a lot if it would just put a small lip in the back like it did here on the X100 Mark VI. It would have done a lot. It, they didn't, it's okay. It, I, the small rear grip fixed most of the issues, but it would have been better suited to have a little bit of a lip on the back as well to help your thumb. They could have done the same thing that the Leica did with the Q2 and just put an indention too. It didn't have to be a bump. Either way, they didn't. We're stuck with it. It's okay. Now the X100 Mark VI has a leaf shutter design, which is in the lens, whereas the ZF is a traditional interchangeable lens system and therefore has a mechanical shutter as well as an electronic shutter. Now, as I mentioned, the X100 Mark VI is, is, a, is, a dwarf, is dwarfed by these other Nikon cameras, and that's due to the size of the sensor, among a lot of other things, being it's a fixed lens system. But what that allows me to do is this, instead of using a peak design, larger sling bag like I have to when I have the Nikon, I can actually fit the Fuji camera into just a small sling bag like this that, that goes over me. And I can put everything else in here, including my wallet and, and everything else. It has a, a dedicated camera pouch right there that the X100 Mark VI fits in beautifully. And then it also has a slot for wallet, keys, organization, a slot for battery, a water bottle slot, the whole nine. This is an everyday carry type bag. And the Fuji X100 Mark VI, the, its size lends to something like that. Whereas if I'm carrying the F, 
the FM2. If I'm carrying this Nikon ZF or any other full frame sensor camera for that matter, it's not going to fit in the back like that. Even the X-T5 wouldn't fit in the back like that because of the interchangeable lens system. It, you need something this small. But that's the point. The fact that this camera so far on paper is lining up with the Nikon ZF and it's the size that'll fit into a sling bag with all your other stuff on a travel trip, that's a game changer. Now we'll see if the audio preamps work and the mic and you know, it doesn't have a flippy screen, lots of other issues to work through, but the fact that it fits in a small everyday carry bag is awesome. And I wish, you know, I wish the ZF did, it's just not quite small enough. Now there's more considerations when it comes to handling that start to blend to the performance side of things. So we're gonna move on to that category next, but for this category, I'm gonna give handling to the Fuji because it's the ergonomics to, for the size, the body ratio are fantastic. And it's so easy to handhold with just a camera strap um, on your wrist. You really don't need anything else and you can hold it all day long with that without issue. It'll never get tired. Whereas the ZF will get tired even with the special edition prime lenses that I have on it now, after a while without the smaller grip. You require that extra grip to make it better, to make it on par, I would say. So the Fuji wins this category. All right, so the next category we're gonna talk about is features and performance. Features and performance. And within this round, within this category three of features and performance, I have many subcategories. And I've scored them each, each of the subcategories to come up with the overall score. And I'm sure it's not gonna surprise you how what happens here, but let's, let's get through it. So let's first start off with screens. The Nikon ZF has a 3.2 inch flippy screen LCD, which allows me to do things like film YouTube videos because I can see myself and I can see that I'm in focus. Whereas the Fuji here only has a tilting screen, two-way tilting screen. It doesn't flip out, therefore, it makes it very hard to get these Instagram friendly vertical low shots where you have the camera sideways. I can flip the screen down and have it right here and I can look at it as I'm walking at waist level and get the low shots. I can't do that. I can do it horizontally or you know landscape wise, but I cannot do it portrait style as I can with the Nikon ZF. So the screen on the ZF hands down wins um, by a long shot. It's not even a, it's not even a close category. The ZF will take the screen category subcategory. Then we get into film sims. The Fujifilm X100 Mark VI has the lovely. Fujifilm film sims that I've always loved and the ability to make Fuji, Fuji film sim recipes based on other film sims like Kodak Gold, for example. Whereas the Nikon ZF, I've heard they're coming out with some film sims for it, but as of right now, built into the camera, there's nothing but there's these camera profiles. Now what I tend to use is the flat profile because I feel like it lends to my low contrast street photography film as type can, uh, type photos. Um, but it does have some camera profiles, flat, standard, yada, yada, yada. They're not as cool, but so obviously we know, who, we know who's gonna win this category, Fuji. So I gotta change my battery though. So I'll be right back and I'm back. That was, that was quick. <laughs> Always have your batteries charged. That's how I roll. So now it takes us to our third category. If you're keeping track, screens, like the Nikki Boy one with the 3.2 inch flippy screen makes it, making it easier for low shots. Fuji came back and landed a solid uppercut with film sims, booyah. Now we're moving on to subject detection modes. And they both have subject detection now. The Fuji X100 Mark VI now incorporates the X-T5 subject detection modes, which is fantastic. However, it does not have the auto subject detection of the Nikon systems, which basically is set it and forget it. I don't have to worry about the, uh, the subject detection. If it sees a car, it'll change it to a car. If it sees a cat, it'll change it to a cat, so on and so forth. If Fuji doesn't do that, you gotta manually go in and change it. Now it's not too hard through the quick menu, but at the end of the day, it's just one extra step and the Nikki Boy wins. Auto subject detection. So it's two to one, Nikon. Moving on to lens options, whereas another one that Nikon's gonna take here because 
it has an interchangeable lens system, whereas the Fuji has a prime fixed lens. Now, there's nothing wrong with a prime fixed lens, especially because the cameras, the trade off is a very tiny, very pocketable camera, but it just lends to the more versatility uh, use case of the ZF. So you, you're in a city where you need a longer lens, like the 50 millimeter, because 28 millimeter is too wide for like a modern, newer city with wider streets. You can, you can do that with the Nikon ZF. You cannot do that with the X400 Mark VI. You can crop in and it, it will still be a very usable image due to the 40 megapixel size of the sensor. However, it's not gonna hold a candle to be able to use an optical telephoto lens like you can on the Nikon ZF. So lens options goes to Nikki Boy. So if you're, if you're keeping track now, three to one Nikon. However, there's a category that Nikon can't even play with and that's called in built-in ND filter. The Fuji has a built-in ND filter that's easily turned on and off. The Nikon does not. End the story, Fuji wins. That's three to two now. The Nikon's in the lead still. So let's go to video specs. Well, I just filmed a little bit of footage with the, with the X100 Mark VI. I'm filming this and I filmed almost all my YouTube videos with the ZF. So I'm very happy with the video capabilities of the ZF, but on paper, the X100 Mark VI actually does 6K video, whereas the ZF is not capable of 6K video. Now, I'm not saying that it's, it's actually better real, real world. All right, let's try this again. I uh, filmed the entire episode. I did a two camera angle with the X106 and the ZF, and I could not play back the X100's footage. I guess it wasn't, it was too new of a Kodak. So I had a back rented 420, H265, and it seems to play. So here's a quick test of the video capabilities at 4K, 24P, using the Eterna Film Sim. Um, how does it look? How does it compare to the ZFs, which I filmed the rest of the episode with? For a small camera, doing 6K is crazy, but even 4K. So let's see how this footage look, it looks. I'm using the internal mics because now that I had to refilm this little short episode, I didn't want to pull out everything. So let's see how it works. But on paper, it's certainly better. And for that, Fuji's going to have to take this category. But the Fuji's have always been fantastic video cameras. Had I only ever used my X-H2 for video when I had it, I probably would have never switched away from it. But I digress. So ne the next one that we're gonna get into is autofocus it. Right now it's three to three. The X100 Mark VI has the autofocus system of the X-T5. I use the X-T5 quite extensively and it's never really let me down. You know, it might hunt a tiny bit more than the Nikon ZF. The autofocus system in the ZF and the Z8 are, are amazing, like hands down amazing. On paper, there's actually more autofocus points on the X100 Mark VI though, compared to the ZF. I think the ZF has 273 to 425 on the, on the X100 Mark VI. And for that reason, the autofocus points might be better, but the autofocus quickness might be faster on the ZF. So really and truly in the real world ex in experimenting, I find that the autofocus was very similar. I didn't miss many shots with either camera body. So it's really a tie. When it comes to features and performance, it's, it's a tie. The Fuji X100 Mark VI has things like the ND, built-in ND filter and 6K video and a little bit better ergonomics. But the Nikon ZF comes back with a better screen, more versatility with its lens options. So, so as far as performance in general goes, I also felt like the ZF was a little bit snappier, a little bit quicker in the menu systems, a little bit quicker cycle time when taking a shot, even though I'm using the same exact SD cards in them. So the performance was just a little bit better on the ZF in general. So with it being a tie and coming down to like the last thing, which is which one's faster processing wise or processor wise, I have to give the nod to the Nikon ZF. At the end of the day, it's just, just not, I mean, just, it mean that much better, just a little bit. And this is a full frame, 24 megapixel pro level camera that people shoot paid work with. But no one's gonna shoot paid work with X100 Mark VI. Although I might try, that might be a good experiment. Uh, we'll get into that later. So, so, so who wins? The verdict 
ultimately it comes down to your shooting style. Are you a street photographer first, but also likes to do paid work or also looks is looking to grow with the system and get into paid work? The Nikon ZF might be right up your alley. Are you more of a family photographer, travel photographer, or street photographer, and you're looking for something small, inconspicuous, something that you can take with you everywhere you go, it'll always be with you, and let's be honest, the best camera is the one that's always with you. The Fujifilm X106, or X100 Mark VI, as I like to call it, is probably going to be the way you should go, if you can get one. Trust me, I, even I pre-ordered one, and it was late. So I feel for anyone who's waiting on theirs right now. But as you can see throughout the photos that I've shared through this video and the video clips at 60 frames per second that I've shared, slow motion video clips I've shared, and the different um, talking points that I've talked about, it's a lot closer than you think. And, and that just speaks to one topic that I'm sure you've heard a million people say to you. But it, it does ring true, and even I, even I, oh my God, even I need to listen to myself. It's not about the gear. It's not. It's about the person behind it. These are tools that we use as photographers. It's really our eye, our composition, our ability to use light, our ability to understand the camera sensor and how it functions and how, it, how it's going to see what we're looking at that really matters it these things these specs on a paper all of this stuff doesn't matter I took my favorite photos of the day with the x100 mark 6 hands down no but, but that doesn't mean that the ZF didn't do fantastic and if I would have had the ZF in my hand when I took the photo that I took with the x100 mark 6 it will I probably would have said the same thing about the Nikon ZF at the time it just happens to be that the, 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 my favorite pictures were taken with the Z, with the X100 Mark VI or the X106. But what I'm telling you right now is that these two cameras, either one of them would be fantastic. The best you could get for street photography. All right, I, I hope that cleared some things up. Um, I can tell you right now, looking at the pictures, I could not tell the difference. Uh, I had to go back and look at the files. The file sizes, that's another thing I wanted to point out. The file sizes are the same, roughly. There are roughly, I'm shooting lossless compressed with both cameras. And after I export to JPEG, both camera file sizes range from about 10 to 20 megabytes per, per file. And that surprised me, to be honest with you. I was pretty surprised by that. And I'm happily surprised, but I was pretty surprised by that. It's nice to see that, you, that this little APS-C sensor can actually hold up to a full frame sensor in good light with no issues. Now we're gonna have to do some more testing in low light and, and at night and in other ways where I saw the ZF shine in San Francisco. We're gonna have to put the X100 Mark VI up to the same um, gruesome, uh, grueling tests uh, and we'll see, you know, we'll see if it does it work. Does it really, really, really stand up? It's, we're going to do some more testing. It's going to take some time. We'll go from there. All right, guys, I'm rambling because I don't, I'm not reading off the script anymore, <laughs> which is my hobo setup right here called a, a laptop. Uh, but that's it. I'm excited that I have both of these cameras. Um, the one thing I can say that this test has taught me I'm gonna hit, don't hit this. The one thing I can tell you that this test has taught me is that this gear, gear really doesn't matter and I need to stop obsessing over it. Because no matter what camera I get or what camera I use, that's always the best camera because it's the one I have in my hand. It really doesn't matter which, which one I have. It's, as long as I have one in my hand, that's all it is. It's me. I'm the guy, I'm the thing that making it happen, not these camera bodies and just, I need to listen to my own advice because I keep saying this and I keep wanting this, I keep switching systems. I've had every single system except for Panasonic at this point. So um, just take my advice if you can. Uh, if you can't help yourself, learn the hard way like I did. All right, guys, that's it for me. Till next time, peace.
cameras that very much lend their aesthetics. Nope. Nope. <laughs>